All right, so we are on lesson 9-7. We've already done these ones in class, so we're going to head on over to number 7. So 1 tenth plus 3 tenths. Well, here I see 1 tenth, here I see 3 tenths, and I'm checking to see if the answer is reasonable. Well, I see that we have this much space to get to 1, and we'd be adding that much space. So it doesn't look like adding that together will give me all the way to one hole. It looks more like it's going to get me to three fourths. So I'm going to say no, it's not reasonable. And then my estimate is three fourths. Let's check number eight. Seven tenths minus two fifths is about one fourth. Well, here I have my seven tenths, and I'm taking away this much. So what I'm left with is about this much of my hole. And remember, I'm just cutting it off, so I have this part left. And if I look, that's about a fourth. It's taking up about one fourth of my number line. You'll see it's about this much space right here. So yeah, my estimate is reasonable. So I'm going to put yes or reasonable. Heading off to number nine. Again, we're just checking to see if they're reasonable or not. I have one half plus two thirds. Well, I know 2 thirds is a little bit more than a half. So I'm saying a half plus something bigger than a half is going to be bigger than one whole. So that one is, yes, it is reasonable. Let's check over number 10. This says draw number lines also to identify bench part fractions as needed. So I may need them eventually. Here, 7 tenths. Well, that's bigger than a half. And 2 thirds is bigger than a half. So I have something bigger than a half plus something bigger than a half. So that is going to be yes, it is reasonable. One half plus one half equals one whole. So something bigger than a half plus something bigger than a half should be bigger than one whole. Here, we have nine tenths minus one eighth is less than a half. Well, this is almost one whole. So this is my estimation. And this is almost zero. 1 eighth is extremely close to 0. If I look up at this number line right here, this would be about, oops, 1 eighth. So I can see I'm only subtracting that much from almost a whole. So my answer should be about 1 whole. And I know that 1 whole is not less than a half. So this one is no, it is not reasonable. And then what I have for my estimation is, well, this is close to 1 whole. And this is close to either 0 or a fourth. It's right in the middle. So I could either take my estimation to be 1 whole, or I could have it be 3 fourths. Either one is acceptable. For number 12, we have 4 fifths minus 2 thirds is less than a half. Well, I know this is almost 1 whole. 2 thirds is close to 3 fourths. Or I also can just do it in my head. That is close to 2 thirds or 3 fourths, either one. But those answers are going to show me that, yes, it is reasonable. Because if I do 1 third, I know 1 third is less than a half. And if I did 1 fourth, I know, oops. If I did 3 fourths, I would have 1 fourth. And I know 1 fourth is also less than a half. So this one is, yes, it is reasonable. Let's head over to the next page now. And here we have Lucy ate two eighths of a watermelon, Lily ate one tenth, and Madeline ate one fifth. Estimate how much of the watermelon they ate and explain. Well, here I see my two eighths, I see my one tenth, and I see my one fifth. So they ate about two fourths, and how I got that is two eighths is equivalent to one fourth. So I'm going to write that equivalent fraction right here. One tenth is close to zero, so I'm going to add that estimation of zero. Remember, these are all estimation, with the exception of two eighths, because that lines up exactly with my benchmark fraction. And then that one fifth is extremely close to one fourth. So here I have one fourth plus zero plus one fourth, which is two fourths. And then remember, I want to try to simplify, so I am dividing by two halves. Remember, it's two halves because that is equivalent to one. So now my answer is one half. They ate half 
of the watermelon. For number 14, we have Gavin, Olivia, and Michael are writing a report together. Gavin has written two fifths of the report, Olivia has written one eighth, and Michael has written two tenths. Use number lines or benchmark fractions to estimate if they have more or less than half of their report to write. So what I'm going to do is this two fifths, that is close to a half. And if I'm not sure, I can make my number line. So here, I was just checking to make sure there was a number line up there with fifths already. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I'll need to extend this just a tiny bit. Oops. Wrong one. Here we go, finally. So I have one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and I guess I didn't extend this long enough. Five fifths. So two fifths is right here, half is right in the middle. So I'm going to estimate two fifths to be a half, and I'm going to write it down here just because I ran out of space. So I have two fifths is equal to one half for my estimation. This one eighth from my problem above, I know one eighth is close to one fourth or close to zero. So I'm going to do zero since it's right in the middle. And then Michael has written two tenths. So that two tenths is equal to one fifth. And hey, what I notice is this two tenths is actually the same denominator as that two fifths when I simplify. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this back to two fifths plus zero plus one fifth. Because now what I'll notice is three fifths is what I have, and three fifths is bigger than a half. Oops, and it's not, there we go. Three fifths is bigger than a half. So they have less than a half of their paper to write. So they are almost done. All right, let's move on to number 15. And I'm going to erase my work here just so we have some more space. For number 15, Last year, the Levitz family sold 16 boxes of nuts for $6 a box. This year, they only have eight boxes to sell. How much do they charge per box to have the same incoming income selling nuts as last year? Well, first, I need to figure out how much they earned last year. So last year, they sold 16 boxes. Each box was six, so I'm making groups of six. So I have 36, regroup. Six times one is six, plus three is nine. So last year, they earned $96. Now what we're doing is we have to take that 96, and we have to break it up into 8, because they only have 8 boxes this time. So I'm taking 8 equal groups, and then uh, remember on my side, I write, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? 8 goes into 9 one time. That's my division. Multiply 1 times 8 is 8. Subtract, and I get 1. Check, 1 is less than 8, so I can bring down. 8 goes into 16 2 times. That's my division. Multiply 2 times 8 is 16. Subtract, 16 minus 16 is 0. Check, 0 is less than 8. It's nothing to bring down, so my answer is 12. They would need to sell twelve or 8 boxes for $12 each. Heading off to number 16, choose two fractions from the list that meet each condition. So A. Their sum is greater than 1. So I'm looking for two fractions that when I add them together, it's bigger than 1. So I need fractions that are bigger than a half. Well, I know 5 eighths is bigger than a half, and I know 3 eighths is bigger than a half. So for A, my answer is 5 eighths and 3 fourths. I think I said 3 eighths that first time, but I meant 3 fourths. For B, they're different. So remember, difference means subtraction is close to 0. So I need two fractions that when I subtract them is close to 0. Well here I see 1 fifth is close to 0 
and one tenth is close to zero. So that is my difference. My last one, their sum is between one half and one. So this one, we have two numbers on the side. We have a half and we have one whole. And when we add them, it needs to be right in the middle. So I need one that's bigger than a half and one that's smaller than a half. So I'm going to choose for bigger than a half this very first one of 5 eighths. And for the smaller than a half, I'm going to choose this 1 tenth. So these are my answers. This is slightly bigger than a half. This is less than a half. So I know my answer is going to be in between a half and one whole. For number 17, we have Harry filled one-fifth of the pitcher with water. Then he filled another six-tenths of the pitcher with water. Estimate what fraction of the pitcher is filled with water. Use the number lines to solve. So one-fifth is going to be right below one-fourth. And I know that because, remember, when I go on a number line, the bigger the denominator, the bigger the piece is. I'm sorry, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the piece is. So 5 is going to have smaller pieces than 4. Now we have this 6 tenths. Then he filled another pitcher. So it's not the same one. It's a completely different one with 6 tenths. Well, I know 6 is bigger than half of 10, which is 5. So I know it's going to be above 5 tenths, which is the same as a half. So now I need to estimate these two. And let me zoom out so I can put my answer in this box. So the pitcher is close to 3 fourths. Oops. And how I arrived at that 3 fourths is this 1 fifth is close to 1 fourth. So I'm going to add 1 fourth plus, and this 6 tenths <laughs> is close to a half. And because I know my equivalent fractions, I know that 1 fourth plus 2 fourths since I multiply my numerator and denominator by 2, is equal to 2 fourths, so I get my 3 fourths. So my pitcher is filled with 3 fourths if I were to combine them. All right, that is it. Good job today, guys.